92.7 WOBM. Joining us this morning, our special guest. We're joined by Paul Reiser, actor, comedian, be performing at the uh, Arts Center, the uh, New Jersey Performing Arts Center, coming up on Saturday, May 14th. So that's next weekend. Paul is going to be coming to the state, and we thank him for joining us for a few minutes to talk about coming here and uh, being with us. Paul, good morning. Good morning. Uh, thank you for having me. Hey, listen, I, I guess let's start with Paul Reiser Live. Uh, tell us a little oh, bit about it. Oh, it's unbelievable. Let me just to give you an idea. Have you seen Springsteen Live? <laughs> yes, yes, yes. It's very much the same. Minus? Uh, uh, minus uh, three hours. Okay. All right. Yeah, because right. I saw Bruce, I saw <laughs> Bruce here twice, and, and God bless him, because he's now 66, and he's doing a four-hour show. Yeah. And he couldn't love Bruce more than me, and I'm going to be honest, in the third hour, when he starts, you know, with the encores, and he says, <laughs> he says, do you have any more in you? And everyone goes, yeah. And he does another song. And he says, do you have any more in you? And by the fourth time, I, I said, uh, no, I don't. <laughs> I don't. It. I'm actually done. <laughs> so so for those of you uh, concerned about getting home, maybe you got to let the babysitter, you know, go home, it will not be a four-hour show. I can promise you that. Very good, very good. But Close other than to that, it, it's, it's an identical experience. When you're doing, um, I wanted to ask you because I, I think that I know the answer to this already, and I know you love interviews where people ask you questions they are going to be answers to. I love what you're asking. I don't know. Go ahead. Go right. for it. Do you find humor in almost every day, like an everyday life? Is that the playbook for you to say, okay, this is funny? Yeah, you know, and and sometimes it's actually a great, um, it's a great way to get over the stuff that's not funny. You know, you get into a thing with somebody out in the world, and you say, if you stand back enough to detach, you go, you know what, this is actually pretty funny that we're we're arguing about this absurd thing. Because in the moment, you're actually upset, and, you know, you're having, a, you're having an argument with your wife about something absurd, and it gets pretty heated. Yeah. You stand back, and you just think, you know, wait a minute, this will actually be a good bit. Half of my act is literally stuff that happened in my house that I just typed up. Yeah, I, you know, they always tell us, you know, look at, you know, uh, the, the, those Me Too factors that, that everybody can relate yeah. to, you know. Yeah. That's, you know so. and, and, you know, people, and, and that's what a lot of the connection is. People are, people are laughing because they're going, oh, man, this guy sounds like it's my house. What they don't realize is that it works the same way on my end. You know, I'm on stage going, thank God they're laughing, so I know it's not just me. So you know, not, it's, a, it's very comforting. You're not going to be bringing out, like, watermelons and sledgehammers. This is more like well, a You never line. know. Let's see how it goes. I always have that in reserve. <laughs> yes, in the back. Uh, <laughs> if you had to pick TVs, movies, or stage, what do you feel most comfortable doing if you had to pick between those three? If I could only do one, I would do stand-up, which is really uh, a new discovery for me because I had taken a long gap from performing from, like, when Mad About You started to – to about four years ago, yeah. I kind of uh, I just put it on the back burner and, and forgot to get back to it. But the minute I got back to it, I I was reminded how fun it is, you know. And and, and uh, it, it, in the moment, it's a lot more rewarding and fun than than doing anything else. You know, everything else you have to sort of wait around and. It involves uh, dozens and hundreds of people, <laughs> and you have to wait for a studio to say, go ahead and make it. Stand up, you just think of something, you tell the people, and then you all go home. It's it's pure and simple, which I love. Are there trends when it comes to stand-up? Like you said, you took a little time away from it. When you come back to it, do you have to say, wait a minute, i got to get kind of caught up as to what today's comic is about as opposed no, to no, you know, you before? Do. I think everybody does what's, you know, what makes them laugh and what where, where they're at, and mm-hmm. and. And uh, I'm still working in the same kind of style I think I was. But when you, with a couple of years under your belt, you're, you have a different perspective on life. So the things you're talking about are, uh, are, are diff- different, maybe. But no, it's you know it's interesting. It was interesting to see that it's doing stand up is actually exactly the same as I remembered it. It's just as fun. It's just as challenging. It's just as simple. I don't mean easy, but I mean simple. You know, it's it, it's it's very low tech. Yeah. You know, there's no. Uh, there's, I always tell people there's no app that you can be funny or faster. You can't, you can't speed it along. Yeah. You just have to get out there and, and uh, make the people laugh. But it's great. And, and, and truly, coming to Jersey is always fun. You know, being, I grew up in the city, and, and then we actually moved to New Jersey when I was a little older. But the, uh, there's something funny about that 40-mile radius. When I'm closer to the city, things are funnier. I don't know what it is. The people are a little sharper, or they just seem more like family. But it's always a great time.
Is it true because you've done both West Coast, East Coast? Is there a big different culture, uh, you know, between living in L. A. and living in New York? You know, I don't think so. I think material, you know, the stuff I talk about anyway. It's you know, it's all. There's nothing that's particularly coastal, but there's just something in the same way that when you hang out with your friends, it's easier. You know, you get together with an old buddy. You can just it fits. That's how it feels when I, when I come to New Jersey. Well, when you, I'm like, okay, man, I know these people. When you get here, it's it's been gray and raining for about a month now. So, you know, it'll be fun when you get here. <laughs> well, I'd like you to cut that out and, you know, snap to it. Hey, Newark in the spring. It's like, you know, April in Paris. It's it, the it, same you know what? Deal. It's very similar, very similar. Yes, except for all you need is a song. Yes. If somebody can come up with <laughs> Newark in springtime. Uh, uh, we'll work on that one. Hey, well, yeah. Whiplash was a great movie. It must have been fun to be and a cool thing to be a part of uh, a movie that got such high uh, ratings. Yeah. And yeah, that was. That was a sweet little movie. And I, was, I read this script and I went, yeah, count me in. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, uh, it was a great experience and uh, one of those rare things that you read it and you know it's going to be good. And, uh, you know, it's really a two-hander between uh, J.K. Simmons and, and Miles Teller. And I, I had this little part. I always tell people I'm in it just enough to not mess up the whole movie. But it, uh, it was all the more impressive because the uh, Damien Chazelle, who wrote it and directed it, who's a New Jersey kid, was 26, I think, when he directed it, which is crazy. I... I have jokes older than him, but uh, <laughs> but he's a really talented filmmaker, and uh, yeah, it was also a great film because I, I point out to people, you know, you think you look at so many movies that have special effects and hundred and two hundred million dollar budgets, yeah. and they may leave you cold. You just go, okay, it's only so much, you know, of that you can digest. And this movie is so small and simple, and it's amazingly gripping because it's actually about to people. It's actually about real people and real feelings, and, and people watch it like, you know, like, like it's a horror movie. And there's a suspense and drama. So it's a great reminder that sometimes you can make even the smallest things really compelling. You know, sometimes it's nice to get off the roller coaster and just take a walk through the park, you know, so that's kind of a... a there nice you go. Thing that. It's a scary park, that movie. Yeah, uh, it is. Yeah, it's, it's, you, it is intense. It is intense. Well, I'll bring give a you bat that. with you. So let me ask you, um, as we wrap up, Mad About You all these years later, do they ever throw, hey, Paul, it'd be great for, like, Mad About You, the grandfather years or something. I mean, do they ever go that route? <laughs> I have not gotten that phone call. <laughs> and I would hang up pretty quick. Uh, <laughs> no, but, you know, it's funny. I, I, the uh, the, the uh, full set DVDs just came out this week, and, and which I didn't even know until I went out touring and doing stand-up that not all seasons were available. And people would come, how come I can't get these seasons and that season? And and we uh, made some phone calls and found out that there was, there was a log jam up somewhere in uh, DVD uh, Central. Yeah. And anyway, so they're finally out. And uh, it, it's, it's, it's funny because the show's been off the air for 15, 16 years. But for me, getting out there and, and meeting people who, uh, for whom the show was really a part of their lives, it's been really nice. I, you know, you don't always hear that. And you get to see people who tell you, man, this episode was so so much a part of my life. Or we got married to the theme song. Well, wow, this is cool. I didn't know this. So it's one of the advantages I get for leaving the house. Yeah. I get to meet it all these cool people thing. and hear the stories. We planned our, you know, nights around shows like yours, you know, because we were, you know, at that age, yeah. you know, that that was part of our night, you know. So it's not, well, you know, it's interesting. I don't think anybody plans their night around anything now because you can watch <laughs> things whenever you want. Yes. So it's almost an, a bygone era when things were on. You know, it, it, it's less and less of that. Listen, it, th- by the way, whereabouts in Jersey did you guys move to when you moved into Jersey? We moved up up by the bridge, Fort Lee. Oh, okay, yeah. So we could see New York, but we weren't in the traffic. Now, so we're, we of course, down here at the Jersey Shore. You had to come down to the boardwalk, at least. Yeah, absolutely, you know. absolutely. And, uh, yeah, when I first, I got, my, we moved just as I got my driver's license, so I would, I was able to, you know, Jersey was like the great Wild West for me. It's like, wow, I got a car now, and I can, I can explore. So I'm looking forward to, to uh, being back, and I uh, hope to see everybody there. Yeah, it is the New Jersey Performing Arts Center on Saturday night, May 14th. I guess PaulReiser.com is where we want to go to get our tickets, right? Couldn't, yeah, you, there you go. Don't there forget. You go. Uh, the uh, series now out, Man About You, the complete, every single episode, every single minute is now out on DVD for you. It's your all yours show. for the asking. Well, Paul. thanks so much for the time. I hope to see you down there. Paul, thanks for being with us. You bet. Thank all you. right, there he is. Paul Reiser, ladies and gentlemen. Don't forget, Paul Reiser live at the New Jersey Performing Arts Center next weekend, Saturday, May 14th. Go to paulreiser.com for details.